hello so in the previous session we had discussed about the derivation parts of our single degree of freedom that is free under condition and also we discussed numericals regarding free under conditions so from this session onwards we will be starting with free damped conditions first of all we will be finding the derivation of our free damped condition and then we will be moving on to some further derivative portion and then proceeding towards the numerical part so the question here can be derive the equation for single degree of free damped vibration system again the force that is external force is not been acting just the initial force that is being acting on the system to just start the motion and then there is no impulsive force on it just there will be damp condition that means now dashboard or dampers are connected to our model so this will be our mathematical model of our system the mass will be connected to a rigid surface now in the previous case this c that is damping con constant was not present that is damping force was not present because it was undamped condition here there is a damp condition so we cannot neglect this value of c we need to find and we need to take in picture this amount there is a value of c from now onwards k that we all know that is our stiffness or you can say spring constant and this will be our external force that is f of t or you can say q of t this will be our mass of the ob object which induces the inertia force so talking about the free body diagram this will be our free body, di body diagram the total force will be f of t and the three forces that are acting on the opposing direction will be our inertia force mx double dot our spring force that is kx and our damping force that is cx dot so according to d alembert principle as we all know that the equation of motion can be written as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f of t from this free body diagram as we can see here but now in this case it is been asked as free damped condition so the external force will be zero clear because as the it is a free vibration system f of t will be considered to be zero so our generalized equation here will be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero this will be our generalized equation from what we will be solving our entire derivative problem clear mx double dot plus k cx dot plus kx equal to zero so this was the force there is a generalized force now talking about the rules and this is a linear differential equation and its general solution is x equal to a e raised to lambda t this is the derivative portion the uh, the derivation or how this solution came or how the roots are been identified is not asked in your examination so you can directly remember this value that as it is a linear differential equation the generalized solution will be x equal to a e raised to lambda t yeah? now differentiating it because we will be requiring three cases we will be requiring x as well as x dot and x double dot x dot is our dx by dt which will be giving us the velocity and x double dot is our d square x by dt square which will be giving us the acceleration so first we will be differentiating it with respect to time so here the uh, differentiation of this a e raised to lambda t comes out to be a lambda e raised to lambda t clear and again differentiating it or you can say the second derivative of it will give us the acceleration that will be x double dot or you can say d square x by dt square and that may that means differentiating again this portion the differentiation will give us a into lambda square into e raised to lambda t so this will be three cases now substituting all these three cases in our equation number 1 as we can see here the equation comes out to be m into x double dot x double dot will be this that is a lambda square into e raised to lambda t c x dot but we will be replacing x dot by this stuff that is a lambda e raised to lambda t and k will be substituted k will be multiplied by x that x will be substituted as a e raised to lambda t so this will be the equation that we will be finding the uh, numerical portion and also we will be deriving the stuff from this so as we can see here dividing by m on all sides that is on both sides dividing by m so m gets cancelled out in this stuff this comes out to be c by m and this comes out to be k by m now moving forward we will be taking common so as we can see here that a and e raised to lambda t is common between all these three terms so we will be dividing by a e raised to lambda t on both sides that will give us lambda square plus 
c by m into lambda plus k by n. Now we will be using this equation and we will be deriving further more. If we can say that lambda square plus we will be multiplying and dividing by 2 in the middle portion. So it can be lambda square plus 2 into c by 2m lambda plus k by m. Now there are two stuff that we will be dealing with. First k by m. As we all know that omega equal to under root k by m that is our natural angular frequency. So omega squared will be equal to k upon m. Clear? So this k upon m can be substituted now by omega square. And end that is a damping constant. And this is a damping coefficient c. So in the previous session this c and n terms were not discussed because there was no damping introduced in it. Now we are dealing with damping. So we will be substituting this c upon 2m to be in the form of n. Clear? c upon 2m will be converting it to n. So now placing omega square and n here, the final equation here comes out to be lambda square plus 2n lambda plus omega square. Making it as equation number 3. Now from this equation we will be finding the roots. Again as we can see here, this is a quadratic equation. So the roots of this quadratic equation will be this lambda 1 comma 2. 1 comma 2 if 1 is for plus and the second root will be minus. Clear? The first root will be in the form of plus and second root having the same value but in the form of minus nature. So it is written as lambda 1 comma 2 that is both roots are mentioned in the same equation. The roots here are minus 2n plus or minus under root 2n square minus 4 omega square upon 2 into 1. So now solving it we are getting an answer to get cancelled out on the both sides. So my, it gets answered minus n plus or minus under root n square minus omega square. This is the value of lambda that we will be dealing with. Clear? Now relative values of n and omega will govern the resulting solution as we can see here that lambda and n omega will be the main cases for if we find if we need to find the values of lambda clear okay? because we will be it lambda will be depending upon n as well as omega so the relative values of n and omega will be the governing the resulting solution of this lambda so now there are three cases being prescribed related to our relation between n and omega three cases can be possible the first case can be it can be over damped system that means n is greater than omega clear okay? that can be three cases first will be greater than second will be equal and third will be less than so it is differentiated into three parts first part or the case one will be over damped system where n is greater than omega now whenever n is greater than omega then the roots lambda 1 and lambda 2 of the equation that we saw earlier in the last slide are real and negative clear okay? and for real and negative roots the solution will be x equal to a1 e raised to lambda t plus a2 e raised to lambda t. The main solution was a e raised to lambda t. Now we will be just dividing into two parts for lambda 1 and lambda 2. So the final displacement comes out to be a1 e raised to lambda 1 t plus a2 e raised to lambda 2 t. This will be the solution of equation if over damped system is been asked. That means if n is greater than omega is being given or it is been proved. Now in over damping system the damping coefficient is always greater than the value of critical damping. Critical damping is always uh, represented by cc that is c will be greater than cc clear. But this uh, resulting motion is not vibratory. Whenever we are getting c is greater than cc that means it will not vibrate it will just oscillate. That means our body will be just oscillating, it will not, it will not be vibrating. Okay? So this was all about our case 1 that is over damped system. Now we will be moving on to our second case. In the second case it will be in the form of n equal to omega. So for n equal to omega it is termed as critically damped system. Okay? We will be talking in the terms of zeta 2 which we will be seeing later on. But first let us discuss about n and omega. So when n is equal to omega, the roots of lambda 1 and lambda 2 of the equation 4 that is minus n plus or minus under root n square minus omega square are real negative and equal. Clear? So for real negative and equal roots, the solution can be given as x equal to a1 plus a2t into e raised to lambda t. This will be the solution for real negative and equal roots. The derivation of this, that how these roots came, is not been asked in your examination. Otherwise, this entire derivation can be of 30 marks. Clear? So it is not been asked here where lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to lambda. 
Now, at critical damping, the damping coefficient C C can be written as 2 m omega. Whenever we are dealing with critical damping, the damping coefficient that is C C will be equal to 2 m omega. And for a critically damped system, C will always be equal to C C. In the over damped, it was C is greater than C C. In the critical damped, it will be C equal to C C. So, for example, if it is given in the question that for a structure having 5% of critical damping, it will have a damping constant C, which will be given by C equal to 0.05 C C. This will be helpful by solving the numerical that how we can interpret between C and C C. That is a damping and critical damping. Clear? Now we will be moving on to the third case, but before that we will be seeing comparative analysis between them. That zeta for an over damp system, zeta value will always be greater than one, which will be deriving later on. Zeta value will be uh, uh, greater than one for over damp system, and zeta value will be one for a critical damp system. As you can see, this is a graph of our zeta versus y of t, that is displacement. So, as we can see, that there is an initial displacement being provided because the initial there is amount of force. After release of force, the system will be coming into equilibrium. If the system uh, comes into equilibrium at zeta equal to one, then it is called as critical damp. If the system comes to equilibrium after crossing the value of one, it can be two, three, something, everything, or you can say up to n, then it is termed as over damped system. Now we will be moving on to our third part that will be under damped system. Under damped system that means n will be less than omega, and n, as we can say that as n is less than omega, the value of the or you can say the square root will be negative. So whenever the square root is negative, that is root minus one, if we say that, then the roots of r that are in complex nature. Clear? So roots lambda one and lambda two are complex. When n is great, less than omega, so they are given by or the solution is given by lambda one two equal to minus n plus or minus i under root omega square minus n square. I is given for the complex roots. Clear? Whenever we are dealing with complex roots, because i as we know that i is minus one square for complex natures. So lambda one two will be equal to minus n plus or minus i under root omega square minus n square. Now the solution of equation one. Equation one was x equal to a e raised to lambda t can be given as a one e raised to lambda t. Lambda now will be substituting this term, so it will be minus n plus one under root omega square minus n square into t plus a two e raised to lambda t. So lambda will be minus n as the condition is plus or minus for first root will be taking positive and this for second root will be taking negative. Clear? Yeah? So now substituting it, first we will be uh, bifurcating it or splitting it up. First we will be multiplying the e value with this, and then we will be multiplying the related term. So the answer here comes out to be e1 e raised to minus n t because t is common in both the terms, and e raised to i under root omega square minus n square into t. Similarly for the later part. So now as we can see here, this is in the form of e raised to i theta. Clear? This is in the form of e raised to i theta, and to solve e raised to i theta, we have seen in the uh, maths that is maths three maths course stuff that it will for solving complex natures, it will be always in the form of cos and sine. Clear? So for solving this, it will be in the form of cos theta plus i sine theta. That is e raised to i theta will be in the form of cos theta plus i sine. Theta. So here the value comes out to be in both these elements. We can see that e raised to minus nt is common. So we'll be taking it outside. So e raised to minus nt a1 plus a2 cos i theta that is cos uh, theta t plus i sine theta. Clear? Yeah? So here we can say that it is a1 plus a2 cos under root this value that is omega square minus n square into t plus I a one plus a two sine omega under root omega square minus n square into t. Now solving it again, if we take this a one plus a two to be constant c one, then it, the value can be written as x equal to e raised to minus n t c one cos omega two minus n into n square into t. I a one plus a two can be written as c two, so c two will into sine under root omega square minus n square into t. So this will be our equation, which we will be solving in the later part. Now, damped angular frequency. 
which saw natural angular frequency which was omega so natural angular frequency was under root k by m now if we introduce damping on it then the frequency can be termed as damped frequency which will be denoted in the form of omega d clear this omega is our natural frequency or you can say omega n clear this is our omega n or natural frequency and this will be our damped frequency so damped frequency will always be equal to under root omega square minus n square and zeta equal to n upon omega this you need to remember it zeta is our damping coefficient or you can say damping ratio which will be n upon omega so omega d will be equal to under root omega so if we take n as a subject then it will be zeta into omega so minus zeta square into omega square so substituting this term that is omega d equal to omega under root 1 minus zeta square so our final value here will be in the this form that is x equal to a raised to minus nt it was so n will be equal to zeta into omega so it comes out to minus zeta omega d c1 or can be termed as omega d so cos omega d into t plus c2 sin omega d into t just to simplify this equation this can be written as this form 2 now as we know that for solving every equation it the final answer cannot be in the forms of constants that is c1 and c2 so now we need to remove this constants c1 and c2 so to remove the constants we need to apply the boundary conditions so here c1 and c2 are constants which can be retained from from the initial conditions or you can say boundary condition so boundary condition here will be when t equal to 0 first case will be x equal to x0 and for second condition it will be t equal to 0 x dot will be equal to x0 dot so from these two cases from first condition will be getting c1 and from second condition will be getting c2 so the final answer here is c1 equal to x0 and c2 equal to x0 dot plus zeta omega x0 upon omega d now this was the equation that we derived earlier so substituting the value of c1 and c2 here c2 can also be written in the simplified form in the form of n if that will be seen so substituting just the value of c1 and c2 in this case the final answer comes out to be this so this is our equation of displacement for free damped condition whenever free damped condition is been asked this will be our equation of motion to find displacement now to find time period so the time period for damped free vibration will be always 2 pi by omega d clear or you can say 2 pi upon omega into 1 minus zeta square clear this was the equation for omega d now solving it uh, the damping ratio damping ratio will always be c upon cc c will be a damping constant and cc will be our critical damping so this terms can be helpful in the solving the numerical part now looking at brief at all the three natures this two cases where are uh, critical damping that was zeta equal to 1 and over damping that we zeta equal to 2 this is the third case that we saw it is under damped that means it goes to negative nature and positive nature and the cycles keep going until it attains equilibrium so so for example for this we can say if we use a hinged door clear if we use a hinged door then if we just shut the door then it will just rotate about its axis that means suppose we are shutting the door in this form this is our original axis of the door this is the door open condition if we are shutting the door with force then it will be moving in the opposite direction coming back moving in the opposite direction and slowly it will be regaining its neck, original form clear yeah? so this is just an example of that under damped motion that whenever we are applying force it goes in the opposite direction comes back then again goes and it uh, literally uh, after a consecutive amount of time or after a consecutive uh, cycles it regains its original nature so this is under damped that means whenever we are dealing with under damped our zeta value will be less than 1 so to simplify all the three cases and to get in get it in one place for helpful in the which will be helpful in the numerical part we can write it as o for over damped system n is greater than omega c is greater than cc and zeta is greater than 1 for critically damped both all the three cases are equal and for under damped n is less than omega c is less than cc and zeta will be less than 1 
so this was all about our free damped condition the derivation is asked in your examination so do refer it again and we'll be seeing uh, further more theory related to damped condition and then we'll be moving on to the numerical part thank you